Alrighty, let's get started. <clears throat> so last Wednesday, uh, we left off talking about a way of representing queries that would kind of help us out. It would be simpler than uh, something that, would, uh, that a human would prefer to use uh, while still being a little bit more abstract than machine code uh, and giving us the ability to kind of play with it and, and optimize it more efficiently. So uh, just to do a bit of a recap, uh, we talked about, or we started talking about how do you build a query processor. Uh, well, there's kind of this weird pipeline that starts off uh, with some sort of human uh, provided uh, request for information, a query, uh, in this case a SQL query, uh, and then there's a whole bunch of processing that happens, and then somehow you get a query result. And we came to the conclusion that, uh, or I, I concluded for you, uh, that SQL is uh, kind of not something you want to be evaluating directly because it just has too many corner cases, too many weirdnesses. Uh, we will get, by the way, uh, into some of those corner cases and weirdnesses. Uh, I, I want to give, give you guys uh, a sense of a uh, kind of simple, organized query language uh, before I talk about something more complex like SQL. Uh, so we've been talking about relational algebra and how relational algebra works. Uh, and I want to make a couple of points that I think I, I didn't make uh, per uh, perfectly clear uh, last lecture. Uh, by the way, this is a, a perfect example. Uh, I, I don't claim to be perfect. Uh, in fact, I'm frequently not. So I want, if anything I say is not, uh, you don't understand it, uh, odds are I'm the one who screwed up. So I want you ra to raise your hand, because uh, if I screw up, you, you'd better be telling me, because I, I know I'm going to be telling you when you screw up, okay? That, that was a joke, by the way. Um, thank you. You, you. you passed the first test. You laugh at the, the professor's cheesy jokes. Um, okay, so uh, one thing that I didn't make uh, particularly clear last lecture, and I want to rectify that, uh, is exactly what kind of data are we working with. Uh, so I talked a little bit about different data formats and different data representations, uh, but we're going to be working predominantly with relational data, which, is, uh, which consists of tables, and each table uh, is a collection of attributes, uh, uh, sorry, a collection of uh, tuples, uh, where each tuple has a consistent uh, set of attributes, uh, is a consistent set of attribute value pairs. Uh, all of the tuples in the collection, uh, and this is kind of the key thing, all of the tuples have the same schema, the same set of attributes. Uh, now, there are three variations on this basic idea, uh, each of which have slightly different constraints on what the collection looks like. Uh, the, at one end of the spectrum, you have uh, collections that are sets. Uh, in other words, collections that preserve uniqueness, uh, where a given tuple or tuple uh, appears at most once. So an example of this is on your left over there. Uh, you'll note that the red shirt, uh, there's only one instance of Lieutenant Red Shirt. Uh, at the other end of the spectrum is ordered lists, uh, where, which are collections that where order matters. Uh, and in this case, I have the, uh, the set elements ordered by rank. And in the middle is this kind of hybrid space where you neither care about uniqueness nor do you care about order. Uh, and the common name for such a collection is a bag or a multi-set. I'll be using the term bag uh, predominantly for the, the, over the course of the term. And so what we're going to be focusing on mostly is uh, sets and bags. Now this idea of relational algebra, uh, I talked about it being composable. Just to make it clear what I meant by that, uh, it means that the same type of data that goes into a relational algebra expression is the same data format that comes out. Uh, so if I feed in a set of tuples to a relational algebra, uh, to a uh, set relational algebra operator, what I expect to see out of that uh, operator is another set of tuples. Uh, similarly, if I feed in a bag of tuples to a bag relational algebra expression, I expect to see a bag as a result. Uh, and finally, uh, if I feed in a list, again, I expect to see a list as part of the output. 
uh, what we've been focusing, uh, what relational al when a database researcher t uh, speaks about relational algebra, typically they're going to be referring to set relational algebra. Uh, there's this notion of bag relational algebra, and I'm going to try and make uh, describe both set and bag, uh, or I've been trying to describe both set and bag relational algebra, uh, because while set relational algebra is in more interesting from a theoretical standpoint, in terms of implementation, uh, what you guys are going to be working with uh, over the course of the project is going to be more closely related to either bag uh, or this extended form of relational algebra that uh, in includes both bags and lists. Uh, so we'll right now be focusing on both set and bag relational algebra. Uh, next week I'll be getting to uh, some of this extended, or maybe not next week. In the uh, in a not too, in the not too distant future, I'll be coming back to uh, an extended form of bag relational al of relational algebra that includes uh, more intricate uh, features. Any questions? Great. Okay. Uh, so, quick re recap of what we talked about last time. Uh, we talked about a couple of different relational algebra operators. Uh, selection, projection, cross product, set difference, uh, union, and intersection. And we just briefly started talking about joins. Uh, so quick show of hands, uh, or quick uh, shout out from you guys, which of these operators are uh, different in bag and set relational algebra? Projection, projection. okay. So projection can, uh, why, is, why is it different? Because it can create duplicates. Uh, anything else that uh, could potentially create duplicates? Union. Okay. So projection and union can create duplicate values. Uh, everything else, uh, if it gets a set as an input, it's guaranteed to produce a set as an output. Uh, the behavior is the same, exactly the same uh, for both sets and uh, bag relational algebra. Okay. Uh, here's our set of example instances. I'll get back to these uh, as we need. Uh, and we just barely started talking about uh, the cross product at the end of last lecture. Uh, the cross product is you take every pair, uh, every tuple from one set, pair it up with every, uh, every tuple from the other set. So you end up, uh, if you have n tuples in one of the two inputs and m tuples in the other uh, input, you get a total of n times m tuples. Now, of course, this is very rarely useful. It's uh, infrequent that you'd actually want to do this kind of uh, operation uh, alone. But where it gets really powerful is when you, when you combine this uh, with a selection operator uh, to pick out certain specific uh, tuples that are interesting. So certain pairs of tuples from one, uh, certain pairings from one set and another set uh, that makes sense. Uh, a, a red wine with a red meat, for example. <coughs> Excuse me. Now it turns out that this is a uh, frequent enough uh, combination of operations that it earned its own name. Uh, this is what is typically known as a join. So a join operates like a cross product in that it has two inputs, uh, but it also has a selection predicate on it. Uh, so that little subscript uh, to the right of the, uh, the join operator, a little bow tie thingy, uh, is a predicate that says which tuples from the left hand side pair up with which tuples from the right hand side. Now, this formula can be really anything. Any Boolean expression that you can think of uh, makes sense to put in there. Uh, although, because there are certain kinds of uh, predicates that are much more common than others, uh, a lot of database research goes into how to satisfy these more common uh, expressions efficiently. Uh, one particular, uh, particularly common type of expression, for example, is what's known as an equijoin, uh, where we have uh, a predicate that matches uh, one value and one attribute from one set with uh, equivalent values from the other set. Uh, so in this case, for example, I'm looking for first officer locations. I have a table of first officers with their corresponding ships, 
and I have a table of ships with their corresponding locations, uh, I can join those two tables together on uh, checking to see if the first officer's ship is equal to the first officer's uh, to the ship's location and I find all of these pairs that are relevant and I get a set of outputs that include uh, all of the first officer uh, all of the first officers along with their locations any questions so far yes could you speak up a little uh, the previous slide or the Right. So there, uh, there are two different, there are two different uh, columns with the same name ship. Uh, this is one of those weird corner cases that databases. Oh, is there? Uh, oh, you are correct. That. Thank you for catching that. Uh, good catch. Uh, yes. So that should be. Those two should be the same. Uh, you're right, the last line is incorrect. Uh, thank you. Yet another example. Raise your hands, uh, because odds are mistake is on my part, and I want to know what that is. <coughs> OK. <coughs> so uh, the result scheme is typically uh, the same as the cross product. In certain cases, you, uh, if you're doing an equi-join, uh, often by convention, the uh, equally named or identical uh, schema elements can get dropped. If the value is the same, why do you need two copies of it? Uh, and there's another, yet another uh, slightly more complex version, or slightly more uh, specialized uh, version of this called a natural join. Uh, and a natural join is just an equi join uh, that implicitly combi uh, pairs up uh, attributes that have the same name. So in this example, we have uh, first officers joined with locations. The ship column is the one that uh, the ship column appears in both tables. So a natural join would uh, join on equal values for the ship. And again, there's an error here. <coughs> okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Then uh, it, the question, uh, that's a great question. Uh, so the question is, uh, what happens when there are multiple columns with the same name? Uh, all of them have to be equal. So if I had a ship and a uh, favorite guacamole recipe uh, column uh, in both the first officer and the ship uh, and, and the location table, then I would, ha I would only pair up first officers who had the same ship and the same favorite guacamole recipe as the uh, location that uh, in the other table. Does that address your question? Yes. There are no uh, two columns with the same name. So does that in a Cartesian program? Uh, so the question is what happens if there are no attributes with the same name? And yes, uh, if, the, uh, if there are no attributes with the same name, then a natural join is essentially a Cartesian product. Uh, that's the same thing as a join where the uh, where the selection or where the the join predicate is just true. It always uh, returns true. Great questions. Any anyone else? All right. Um, so we're going to talk about one last operator, uh, which is called division. And I mentioned this on Piazza on Wednesday. Uh, if you've had a chance to look at it, great. You're going to have uh, an easier time in the next five minutes. If not, uh, then division is a weird operator that, as far as I know, the, the main use is uh, for database professors to see if the, uh, the class is paying attention to the rest of the relational algebra lecture. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but division basically is a way of answering queries like uh, find me all of the first office all of the first officers who have visited all of the planets or sorry all of the officers who have visited all of the planets uh, so 
For example, if I have a table of visi a visited table and a table of planets, uh, then visited divided by planets would give me all of the fir all of the officers who have visited uh, every planet in the uh, planets table. Now that's a little bit weird, so let me uh, illustrate this with an example. Uh, I have my visited table right there, and I have uh, three different instances of a planets table. Uh, one containing just Earth, uh, one with Earth and Vulcan, one with Earth, Vulcan, and Romulus. Now if I divide uh, the visited relation by this first one, I get all, uh, all of the officers there. Kirk, uh, Kirk, Spock, McCoy, and Scotty have all been to all of the planets in that relation, namely all of the, the one planet in that relation. If I divide uh, visited by uh, P2, I get Kirk, Sp uh, Kirk uh, Spock, and McCoy, but not Scotty, because Scotty has not been to Vulcan, uh, whereas each of the other th uh, three officers have been to both of those two planets. And finally, if I divide uh, by this third one, uh, only Spock has been to all three of those planets, Earth, Vulcan, and Romulus, and therefore that's the only one that he's in. Uh, sorry, that, that's... He is the only officer that satisfies uh, that query. Any yes? SQL, so this is a specific type of operation. I believe certain implementations of, so the, the question is how does, uh, how would you do this in SQL? Is that the, the gist of it? Uh, there is a specialized operator called divide in certain implementations of SQL. Uh, if you look closely at the manual for probably Oracle, DB2, maybe even Postgres, you'll find something like this. Uh, like I said, the main purpose, as far as I'm aware, of the division operator these days is to make sure that you guys are paying attention. Uh, why? Well, why don't you guys uh, try it? So division is uh, what's called a non-primitive uh, non operation, which means that you can implement it using all of the other operations that we've discussed so far. So. Uh, I want everyone to uh, find, yeah, everyone's close enough to someone else, uh, turn to someone uh, left or right, uh, two or three people, and you know, say hi, introduce yourself, and uh, grab a piece of paper and try and implement this using selection, projection, uh, join, uh, or Cartesian product, and uh, intersection. You got about uh, five minutes or so. <coughs> uh, yes. So implement implement an operator that use the existing opera, uh, relational operators to come up with something that would behave like this. Uh, selection, projection, uh, Cartesian product, set difference, intersection, union. Oh, okay. Uh, in about uh, another three, four minutes, we'll raise your hand and we'll discuss.
And I think at least one person posted a, a response on Piazza, so. Uh, you can assume, uh, that's a great question. Uh, you can assume that you know the schemas of all of the, uh, all of the source relations. Uh, your answer will depend on that, most likely. Uh, l let me rephrase that. You know, uh, <clears throat> in, in the division operator, there are basically two sets of attributes. Uh, there's the set of attributes that are in uh, the, uh, the second uh, relation, the P1 in this case. Uh, and there's the set of attributes that are in V, but not in P. Uh, so all of the attributes in P have to be in V. Uh, so you, you can assume that you know what those two sets of attributes are. The ones that are in uh, one of the two and the ones that are in both of the two. Show of hands, who's uh, gotten to a rough answer so far? All right, let's maybe give uh, another two or three minutes. Uh, do you, did you have a question? Oh. Uh, 
Okay, I, I mean, we're, uh, it's not going to be collected. We're just going to be talking about uh, your solution. So I'll, I'll write it up on the board. All right, let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Um, okay, so first off, is this just something you can throw a small sequence of relational operators at and get a correct answer? Okay, uh, so can you uh, start us off? What are we looking for? Or Brit Uh, natural, uh, do a natural join between V and P and project the name out. Uh, and what's that going to get us? It, just in English. Uh, the name of uh, all those officers uh, who have visited all the planets that have mentioned in P. The name of all officers, so something like, something like that. So if I do a cross of V and P, that's going to get ah a natural join on uh, so that'll be on planets. Uh, okay, so let's run that. That's uh, going to be on planet. Uh, let's let's run an example there. Uh, okay, so P two. If I multiply, do a natural join between uh, P two and V. Uh, what's that going to get me? Or what's my output going to be? So Kirk, uh, Kirk, uh, and I'm going to, looks like I'm going to get two copies of Kirk. Uh, I'll need two, uh, sorry, two copies of Kirk, comma, uh, Earth. Uh, Kirk, comma, Vulcan. Uh, looks like I'll get Spock, uh, Earth, Spock, Vulcan, McCoy, and so forth, McCoy, uh, and it looks like I'm going to get Scotty, uh, Earth, right? So then I'm going to project that down, right? And i uh, got to do my duplicate elimination, of course. So. McCoy, one copy of McCoy goes away, one copy of Spock goes away, one copy of Kirk goes away. Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Scotty. Not quite what I'm looking for. Good try, though. Anyone else want to take a crack at it? Yep. What? Uh, project the name of? Uh, project. Uh, close paren or. Uh, uh, slow down a bit. Um, Project V cross, what do you mean, uh, so square bracket. square bracket here? Yeah, and then, uh, uh, zone bracket, and then close bracket here? Uh, what do you mean by, like that? Ah, good idea. Projective name off of project name. Ah, I see. Name off of project, a second project name, gotcha. V cross like that. Uh, v, intersect with V. Uh, all right. Let this is oh, yeah, double. Yeah. Make that. Here. <laughs> ah, I see. Yep, makes sense. 
parentheses is important. Okay, let's run through some examples here. Uh, all right, so um, project name from V. So this gets us what? What is that? All of the all of the officer names. Okay. Uh, so then this whole uh, spread gets us what? All of the so all of the names cross all of the planets. So this is uh, this. You can think of it as kind of uh, assuming that all of the officers visited all of the planets. This is what V would look like, right? Uh, so, okay. Uh, so in this case, that would be uh, again for P two, uh, Kirk, Vulcan, Kirk, Earth, all the way down to uh, Scotty, Vulcan, Scotty, Earth. Right. Okay. Now this looks like we're we're getting somewhere. Uh, now let's intersect that with uh, V, and once again we get everything in this list except for uh, Scotty Earth. And Sky just doesn't want to die. Um, just uh, okay. So this is this is getting us closer to where we want to be because. We at least have some sense of what the correct, uh, what the, the kind of complete result should look like. Um, but if we project this down, Scotty is still there. All right. Anyone else? Uh, projection from name to the second projection. Uh, if we project just the set of planets, then that'll give us all pairs of planets. Quick question. Uh, did anyone have a answer that included set difference? Okay. So, as you can, yes. I just had this idea right now. So, uh, what if we first project uh, B, uh, project the planets on B? So, we get the list of all the planets that are there in B Earth, Vulcan, Romulus, and Kronos. And then we subtract P2 from there. So, what we get is only Kronos and Romulus. And then uh, do a cross product. Okay, we can try that. Uh, we can try that. Um, let me ask you one thing. In terms of the responses here, do Kronos and Rom do Rose, including Kronos and Romulus, play any role in the answer for? Uh, actually, a uh, So <clears throat> let's back up a little. So it seems like we're we're onto something with this idea of building what the final relation should look like. So here's a thought. What if we were to What if uh, the Let's let's take the problem and, and break it down into uh, kind of individual steps. We're looking for we're looking basically here to get rid of Scotty. What's different about Scotty? Okay, so there's uh, he does 
he doesn't, there's no Rose Scotty Vulcan. Which means we need to find a way to uh, kind of identify that Scotty Vulcan doesn't exist. We're looking specific. Now, we have kind of this picture of all of the rows that should be in the result. How can we combine that with the information that we do have to figure out that there's some rows missing there? Okay. So if we do uh, minus V, okay. Great, so now we've discovered that there's this one pesky row, Scotty Vulcan, that doesn't exist in, in the answer there. Okay, there's this one pesky row that shouldn't be in the answer. So now we've inverted the answer. We have all of the rows that shouldn't be in the answer. How do we get the rows that should be in the answer? What is the intersect uh, with what? Well, so, yes. Okay. All of the names. Yep. So we have here's all of the names that uh, all of the officer names. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, there you go. So this this uh, this is a, a three-stage process. If you can, uh, this turns out to be a little bit intricate here. Uh, so let me run you through the the answer kind of graphically. Uh, you have a chunk that describes all the names with all of the planets. So this is the answer that. Uh, this is all of the possible answers that we would expect to see if all of the officers had visited all of the planets. We pull out all of the planets that uh, all of the officers, or all of the officer planet pairs, uh, that don't exist. So this is the inverse of the answer. And that gives us all of the people who haven't visited at least one of the planets. And then finally, we subtract that from all of the people, all of the officers, and that gets us to uh, all of the uh, all of the officers who haven't visited or who have visited all of the planets. So kind of a double negation, but it's a double negation where you do a little bit of work along the way to filter out certain elements. Okay. Uh, We have about 10 minutes left. That is probably not enough time to justify starting a sequel. So I've, let's do one more of these. So this one should be a little bit simpler. Uh, but the goal is a little bit different. So here's this, oh, let me bump that down a little. So here's our captain's table, our locations table. And I'd like you to, once again, uh, turn to your, your uh, neighbors and try and come up with not just one, but two queries that answer the question, find me all captains uh, of a ship, lo uh, sorry, find the last name of a captain located uh, on uh, Bajor.
They don't have to be drastically different, but I want at least a couple of different ways of phrasing the query. All right, we're uh, coming close to the end, so let's uh, let's wrap up. Uh, all right, what are some ways that yes? First, uh, okay, so natural join of uh, captains and locations. Project. Okay. Yep. Oh, actually, uh, anyone else? Uh, let's spread it out. Yeah? Okay. So select location, uh, Bezier on locations. Captain. And then project last name over that. Those are the two big ones. Did anyone else come up with a third? Yeah? Okay, so start with same here. Okay, so uh, equally join with captains. Okay, so uh, that you could replace with an equally join uh, dot ship equals l dot ship. So okay, could replace that. Okay. Like I said, those are the, the two big ones. Why? So first off, do I have, uh, does anyone not buy that these two queries are computing exactly the same thing? Good. Why does it matter that I have two different queries? Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, what else? So 
So something like that. That's the one. That's the third one I was uh, thinking of. Uh, okay. So why is it important that we have? Uh, why, why am I even bringing this up? Why? Why? Why are you guys doing this? Is one of these better than the other? Is is there a reason that execution time? Thank you. So, which one of these would be, be would be faster to execute? The, this one, uh, show of hands. This one or this one? The second one. Okay. Uh, why? Okay, so here, I here I need to uh, run the selection predicate over all of the captains times all of the uh, all of the captains with all of their ship locations. Whereas here, I'm doing the selection predicate uh, on all of the ships. But once I have all of those ships, now this join ends up being a lot cheaper because I'm I'm only joining against a smaller number of ships. And that's kind of one of the biggest uh, speed ups that you're going to be able to get in project two. We'll come back to this when we start talking about optimization, but I just want to get this kind of churning around in your, your minds at the moment uh, that not only are all of these queries equivalent, uh, but that there are certain uh, that some of the queries are actually going to be more efficient than others uh, because they allow you to get rid of data, get rid of irrelevant data sooner. Uh, all right, so uh, with that, any final questions? Yes. Uh, there's, that's actually a great question. So what, uh, the question is, what about this third one? Uh, which of these is better? Uh, is this third one going to produce a significant impact? And the answer is, it depends. Um, you're incurring more cost because you have another operator that needs to project things away. On the other hand, you're now getting rid of, you're, you're putting that work in to get rid of data, so later operations are going to have an easier time of it. Um, typically, in a single site, uh, on, a, uh, on a single node uh, database, it's not going to be worth it, typically. In a distributed setting where this, jo this captain's relation consists of uh, petabytes of data, the location's relation consists of gigabytes of data, this join becomes huge. So if you can get rid of uh, even a small fraction of that data early on and avoid having to, sh uh, to send it out over the network, that's potentially a huge win. So typically, that's not an optimization you would need to do in a, in a small scale database, but uh, it's, it's one that can pay off in certain cases. Or if you can integrate this into work that you're already doing. Um, that's actually another optimization that I'll discuss when we talk about uh, query optimization. Uh, any final questions? All right, uh, see you all on Monday.